Hi. So today I have my house plant for you all. If you look over here, you know it very well that leaves are the kitchen of the plant or leaves are the food factory of a plant since leaves make food with the help of photosynthesis. Now what's photosynthesis all about? It's a process by which leaves make food with the help of sunlight, water and carbon dioxide. Now since leaf is green in color, it captures sunlight with the help of chlorophyll, right? Now, what about carbon dioxide? Leaf has got tiny pores in it known as stomata and these stomata absorb carbon dioxide, right? Now, when it comes to water, imagine water is taken uh, from the roots, roots absorb water from the soil and then it travels up through the stem and reaches leaves. Now, I am sure you all might be wondering, how come water reaches till the top of the plant, till the tip of the plant, till the last leaf? And then, you might be wondering, you might have seen so many trees around you, right? Very, very tall trees. Now, just look over here. If, we, if you pour water, what exactly happens? It falls down? Yes? That's due to uh, gravitational force. Now, I know you all might be wondering that how come water reaches up? That too against the force of gravity. How come it goes from down to up and then to the top of a tree when you, you might be wondering to the tall trees, the trees which are uh, 30, 40, 50 meters high, very, very tall trees. Isn't it amazing? Now, just give me a minute. I'll just have a sip. What did I do here? I picked up a straw and I just took a sip. When I, sip, when I, when I was enjoying my drink, what exactly I did, I created a pressure here. And that is the suction pressure. I just sucked my cold drink up. Right? And then you could see How it rises up and I could have it. In the same way, there is some pipe, there is a straw inside the stem of this plant, right? Which might be allowing the water to move. How does it move up, uh, upwards? Now, uh, I have an experiment for you. Here I picked up, you could see, I picked up three flasks, okay, and I took food color. Red, green and yellow. I picked up three food colors. I picked, uh, I took three flowers. I took water and I took white roses, right? So what I exactly did is, in the first flask, I picked up water and I mixed red color. In the second flask, I mixed uh, green color in water. Whereas in the third one, I mixed yellow color in water, okay? Then I kept, I placed a white rose on first, second and third flask. I left this arrangement like this for at least two hours. And then, do you know what did I observe? In the first class, in the first flask, my rose is completely converted into red color. You could very well see the red color. And in the second flask, uh, rose has absorbed the green color. See, the rose has turned out completely green. Whereas in the third one, it has picked up yellow color. Right? Could you all see the yellow color over here? Whereas the actual color of my rose was <coughs> white. I picked a white rose, whereas it got converted into three different colors, that is red, green and yellow. How come it is like that? So, definitely there is a straw inside. Okay? If you see this, stem if you see the stem of my ro of my rose plant in this tiny stem as well in this tiny twig as well there is a straw inside which is allowing the water to flow up yes how my this rose is red in color because this red full red colored water has traveled through the straw 
through the stem and then it has converted the rose into red color. You could see all the petals are red over here whereas all my petals are green. So this flower has picked up, this straw has picked up the green color which was inside the stem and made my rose green in color. Is it clear? So definitely there is a pipe. Do you all agree with it? There is a pipe inside the stem that sucks the water in. Right? And that's how the water travels up. If I take a, a cross section, if I cut the stem, if I observe it under a microscope, what will I see? That there are red patches inside. Alright? If I, uh, if I take a transfer section of the stem, if I observe under a microscope, I will find red patches. So, these are the tubes or the straw. Uh, there is a straw which, by a through which the water is travelled, right? And the name of this straw is xylem, right? So what is xylem? Xylem is a tube, it is a thin tube, uh, like a straw, through which the water is moved up, fine? Now what is this xylem all about? How did we get this tube inside a plant? How it is made? So, the way your classroom is made up of bricks, the way our body is made up of cells, in the same way this plant body is also made up of cells, right? So, these cells, if you see in the straw, they are, uh, they are joined end to end, like one above another. See, imagine as if this is one straw, this is another. Uh, one cell, this is another. So, they are joined one above another, okay? They are piled up like this. Now, what exactly happens? Uh, for each cell, there is a cell wall here. This cell wall later on gets dissolved. If this uh, cell wall gets dissolved, of all the cells, it can become a continuous pipe. Right? And whatever is there inside the cell, that also disappears. Okay? Uh, in fact, inside a cell, there is a dark color body, there is a black body known as nucleus. The way, who controls your entire school? The way, the princip our principal sir controls the whole school. In the same way, this dark color body, which is inside the cell, uh, controls all the activities of the cell. But here what happens, when these cells are arranged one above another, when they are piled up one above another, when the horizontal wall dissolves and it forms a tube-like structure, the entire thing of the cell gets is destroyed, even the name nucleus is, disappears. Alright? Now it is just a continuous pipe which is made up of dead cells. Why we call it dead? Because there is in the, uh, the, all the organelles of the cells are not there. Let it be a nucleus or whatever is there filled inside the cell. Everything is dead, everything disappears and all these forms, all these cells forms a tube-like pipe, a tube-like structure, a thin type pipe which is known as xylem. Now, the wall of this pipe, you could see in my straw as well, it is a bit thick. So there is a thickening, thick. Uh, there is a thickness of lignin over here. Imagine if the wall would have been thin, would have been very thin. What would have happened? Through the pressure of the water, I'll just show you. Just imagine if this is the wall of your of the xylem vessel and it's very thin. Just see when I'll uh, when the water moves up, what exactly happens? What would have happened to that wall? In case if, if there is no uh, accumulation of lignin. <coughs> so, with the effect of the pressure, the wall would have collapsed. Am I right? And water cannot rise up. Is it clear? So, there is a deposit of lignin over here in order to make this wall thick and they are of various types, right? Now, we agreed that there is a straw inside the stem, there is a pipe inside the stem which trans transports water, right? Now, what exactly happens is, here I created, as I told you, I created suction pressure. I created pressure here. But who is creating the pressure inside the plant? Imagine as if this is a straw over here, but how come the pressure is created so that water should travel up and then it should disappear, right? What exactly happens in this plant? As you all know, roots absorb water, right? Roots absorb water from the soil and then this water is carried 
is uh, picked up by this uh, straw and uh, by the xylem it moves up it reaches the leaves and what exactly happens in these leaves you can see leaves have got tiny uh, if you see under a microscope or with a lens you will find tiny holes or pores on the leaf which you call it as a stomata right now through this stomata the water which has come till here evaporates it gets converted into vapor and it evaporates okay so uh, the leaf loses water and when i tie this carry bag that water has touched this carry bag and you could see very tiny drops of water over here right it is by condensation so two process you could see here evaporation and condensation this entire process is known as transpiration so what is transpiration all about it is a process by which a plant loses water through its leaf in the form of vapors now in this transpiration plant loses water through all the aerial aerial parts it could be a stem or a leaf or a flower or a bud or whatsoever it is right so plant is losing water now imagine what exactly happens in this plant is uh, whatever water it absorbs it takes in from the soil whatever water the root takes in from the soil it travels to this stem through the xylem and 95 to 98% water is evaporated by the leaf imagine when the water is evaporated whatever it absorbs is evaporated by the leaf then why do plant need water for the need of sucking the water why should plant do all this process now over here water acts like a train right now roots absorb water from the soil you could see over here soil has got lot of water and it has got some dissolved minerals also inside so roots absorb water from the soil and as you as i told you all the water acts like a train all these minerals hop, uh, are boarded in the train and this water takes all the minerals they are travel through this straw and the moment the all these minerals reaches your reaches the leaf they are dropped in uh, in the leaf and leaf absorbs the minerals and then the water moves out in the form of vapors and it gets evaporated so here actually the water is like a train where all the minerals hop in and when the moment the reach the leaf their destination they are absorbed over there and the water is evaporated is it clear but as the water gets evaporated uh, due to this transpiration there is a suction pressure created in the stem did you understand when i was enjoying my drink i created the suction pressure i was sucking my drink and uh, somehow i could enjoy the drink right but over here the suction pressure is created by transpiration when this water evaporates and then the suction pressure is created and these this water travels uh, and again the process continues you could say but all this process is done during day time water gets evaporated in due to sun heat due to the extreme heat of the sun now what exactly happens in the night in night there is no sun then how will this leaf get water just think over it what happens in the night when it comes to day time the transpiration takes place and when the water is evaporated during day time the whole plant plant body cools down what happens with us when we go out we also start sweating due to sun due to the heat extreme heat of the sun but then our body cools down after sweating right the same process is done in the plant throughout the day the plant is outside in the sun so it keeps on evaporating and then the plant body cools down now think over think what exactly happens in the night how will this leaf get water how will the topmost leaf of the tree of the tall tree get water when there is no sun no evaporation no transpiration takes place now what exactly happens over here just look here you could see this yellow balls here this yellow color thing imagine as if these are the nutrients or the minerals in the water and this is the root what this root does in the night time it has a tendency to absorb these minerals to take the minerals in 
okay so these minerals these yellow color uh, dots go inside the root during night and then if you'll see outside the water is we have lot of water outside the root right so this water gushes in the root and then it develops a pressure over here and it starts pushing the water up moving the water inside the root and this water is pushed up it is moved in the xylem vessel and then it reaches till the top of the uh, tree or uh, whatever the leaf it is okay this continues throughout the night though the pressure is little low it's not like transpiration the rate is not that high but it continues it is due to root pressure that uh, the water continues over here now let's come down to the transportation uh, we talked about transportation in plants today when it comes to transportation uh, we talked about vascular system so this plant has got two tubes one xylem uh, vessels one uh, another one is phloem vessels now if you look over here if you look in this plant there are two tubes one carries water another carries food right so uh, the food prepared by the leaf is to be carried uh to all the parts of the plant right so food will go down also it will even go to the root okay whereas water only travels in upward direction right your root also need food now if you see over here xylem are the dead cells as i told you phloem are the live cells phloem starts uh, with fur fur for phloem so phloem uh, carries food okay phloem and food both begins with fur now let's come down to the xylem which are dead cells it moves water which goes only in upward direction it it also gives support to the plant it is long it is hollow elongated continuous tubes less resistance and xylem is a greek word which is known as wood this is the uh, lining in the xylem annular one in form of rings and this is the spire in the form of spiral form which uh, which you can call it as a spiral way reticulate we have lignin lignin in the form of reticulate uh, way and then we have pitted ones okay so there are four types transpiration causes suction um suction pull and then as a result a uh, cooling effect is there in the plant so uh, that's all for today we'll see in the next module okay